Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Terima kasih pengurusi majlis yang berbahagia dan Sri Dr. Muhammad Hassan Malikan, Chancellor University Technology Petronas dan yang berbahagia Puan Sri Nuraini Muhammad Yusuf. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Datuk Sri Baki Saleh, pengurusi Petronas. Yang mulia Datuk Tengku Muhammad Taufik Tengku Aziz, Pro Chancellor University Technology Petronas. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Zahara Ibrahim, Pro Chancellor University Technology Petronas dan yang berbahagia Datuk Muhammad Asad Sehat. Yang berusaha Encik Pacu Pilong, Pengerusi Lembaga Pengarah Universiti. Yang berusaha Profesor TS Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim Abdul Tutalib, Naik Chancellor University Technology Petronas dan Puan Dita Sureda Baharu. Yang amat berbahagia Dr. Puan Nur Raini Cik Ni Cik Teh. Ahli-ahli Lembaga Pengarah UTP, Ahli-ahli Senat, Ahli-ahli Jawatan Kuasa Perusahaan Universiti, Dip-Dip Kepormat dan Barisan Kepimpinan Petronas. Para pensyarah dan kapitangan Universiti Teknologi Petronas, para ibu bapa, tuan-tuan, puan-puan serta sahabat-sahabat perjuangan sekalian. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat sejahtera. Saya ingin melahirkan penghargaan buat pihak UTP yang memberikan saya peluang ini untuk mewakili para graduan Convocation kali ke-21. Sebelum meneruskan ucapan, izinkan saya untuk meneruskan ucapan dalam bahasa Inggeris. I would like to express my gratitude to those who have guided us, mentored us and supported us from the moment we stepped through the gates of UTP to the final moments of leaving it. Firstly to God, the most gracious and the most merciful, for allowing us to experience university in the way that we did and learn from that experience. We express our everlasting gratitude to you till our last breath. Secondly, to the university and its lecturers that work tirelessly to educate us, not just on the syllabus, but also on life lessons that we will take with us as we move forward in life. We thank you. And thirdly, to the graduates of the convocation, some of them my classmates that became friends and that are now like family. Thank you for being my friend and putting up with my antics. Thank you for waking me up early to go to class or reminding me of late assignment submissions. Thank you for lending me money when I was short. And to those who owe me money, please pay to my account as soon as possible. Thank you. And thank you for the memories of our adventure in UTP and hope we'll make more memories in the future. A special thanks to the psychology unit, Yayasan UTP, Nuha Shuhada, my housemates in foundation, and in the final year, for being my support system, going through the mental health issues and financial issues. And last but not least, to my parents, who brought me into this world, who raised me well, worked day and night to support my, the family, who got angry at me when I was becoming difficult and rebellious, who believed in me and to whom I can never repay your sacrifices, but at least I can hope to make you proud and I hope that I've done that today. Thank you, Mama and Abba. Never in my wildest dream I ever thought about standing here receiving this award and those who know me for my wild antics outside of these formalities, outside of these events, they are also equally as surprised as I am. I can sometimes be very wild outside. But there is an elephant in the room that I want to address. That there is a myth surrounding this award. There's a myth, there's a lot of myths in this convocation. There's a notion that by virtue of receiving this award that somehow I am better than the graduates that are sitting those three aisles. This is a false notion, absolutely not. Not just because I'm sitting here giving this speech, having receiving this award, not make me any better. My journey is just as complicated as, as intertwined and as crazy as everyone else. This award in itself, it's just a piece of metal that's attached to a wood. First class, second class are simply words that are written on a piece of paper. Or at least today, there are words that are written on PDF files. They don't mean, they themselves don't mean much. 
But what gives them the auspiciousness, what gives them the honor of receiving it is the journey to receiving that particular award. This is just a piece of metal, but the journey to get here, that is what makes it so auspicious. And my journey was crazy. I was not meant to be here and giving this speech. For UPSR, PT3, and SBM, I was a B student at best. I never got straight A's, and every major exam always had a C. So what happened? After SBM, I didn't, eat, I didn't know what to do with my life. After joining UTP, I learned, I strived, and after I finished my studies and secured a job immediately, I still don't know what to do with my life, but at least now I know how to do coding. <laughs> I'm not standing here and telling you what to do with everyone's lives. Your path is your own life. We tread on our own lives. I'm here to just tell my story. Now, on a more serious note, as a person who didn't do well in, in school, I had to change myself in order to obtain the success that I did. But what was that success? Well, I'm glad that you asked. That success was, I was the 13-time Dean's List Award recipient, the first president to win a party-based election, the vice president of the National Student Union, the best participant of the National Youth Leadership Convention, and today, right here, right now, I am the goal to Chancellor Award recipient. But how did I do it? Well, besides born with a couple of privileges and receiving lots of riziki from God, I did three steps. The first step, I split my life into five components. Academic, social, mental health, physical health, and spirituality. I always made sure that I was actively improving myself in all these components. I was studying, but at the same time, I was hanging out with friends. I was praying at the mosque, but at the same time, I was going to the gym. I was making sure that all my time and effort was evenly distributed across these five components. The second step, I stopped chasing titles, positions, power, money. It's funny, isn't it, that I'm standing here as the award recipient telling you that I never actually pursued this? Well, then what did I pursue? Well, you see, when I was in primary school, my goal was five A's. When I was in high school, my goal was 10 A's. And in university, I realized that all those A's are simply letters on a paper. I realized that the only goal that mattered for every human being that's ever existed is happiness. And everything between us and happiness are merely methods of getting there. I understood the real meaning of happiness because money does not give me happiness. But what gives me happiness is earning that money after doing hard work, putting the hours. Being the Gold Chancellor Award recipient does not make me happy. It does not give me happiness, but to earn it as a, but to earn it after going through a journey that is ridden with challenges, that does. You see, it's not about the destination, but the journey to get there. And I testify to those words. And finally, the third step, I accepted the past and learned from it. You see, as much as I felt like not getting straight A's in my school was a bad experience, I had to accept it because I can't change it. No one can. No one can change the past. But instead of trying to, ch instead of trying to change the past, I learned from it. Then I found that experiences cannot be defined as good or bad. It's what we do with that experience that defines it. Well, these are my components of success. I'm not telling you what to do. This is not a surefire way of getting to success because everyone's path is different. What is for sure though, is that many people are scared to start treading on the path to success and we define our own success. It is a path that is ridden with challenges and hard times. We will not be in our comfort zones while on this path. Why should we even bother to strive for success? I mean, earlier I said that happiness was so important. Shouldn't we just be happy in our comfort zones? No. Don't mistake happiness and pleasure. There is happiness to be found everywhere, even in hard times. And the reason why you should strive for success is because many things depend on you succeeding. We owe our success to ourselves, to the people in this hall who 
who sacrificed so much to build us up, and to the world that has countless of problems that need our minds to solve it. Don't fear the journey to success. We are living in our own book of life and we want to fill that book with, with success and happiness. Today, the convocation marks the end of a chapter in this book of life and tomorrow is the start of a new. In this book of life, our future has not yet been written. We are the authors of our own future. Our destiny is not written in stone. We define our futures by the decisions that we make today based on the lessons learned from the past. And what is stopping us from reaching the success is not the challenges or the hurdles, but taking that first step to the path of success. Many people fear that first step. And so it's in the spirit of ending a chapter and looking forward to a new chapter, let's start with a decision. So right here, right now, I challenge all of us to make a decision. This goes to everyone in the hall, the students, the parents, the lecturers, the staff, the organizing committee, the Gamelan players. It's never too early or never too late to answer this one question that can kickstart this new chapter in the graduates' lives. Answer it in your hearts and attach the answer to your soul and bring it with you as you go along in this journey called life. And that question is, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, my family, do you want to be successful? See everyone down the road. Salam alaikum.